can Takashi 6 9 say nigga? Yes, he can say nigga. Maybe be asking the wrong questions. I'm about to be your really annoying elementary English school teacher and say, the question is not can he say nigga? You can say whatever you want. The question is, may you say nigga? The question is, should you say nigga? The short answer is, if you're not black, don't say nigga. If you ain't black, don't get smacked. But, but then, what does it mean to be black? How do you know if you're black or not? So Takashi 6 9 has a Mexican mother and a Boricua father. Boricua as in, he's Puerto Rican. Now a lot of y'all know that I'm Boricua, and most of us in Borican are mixed. We are Afro-Indigenous peoples who were colonized by the Spanish. TLDR, Spaniards came to the island, their diseases wiped out the Taino to near extinction, we dead still here, I promise you, and brought over West African slaves to do the labor. But there are still criollos, there are still white Spaniards in Puerto Rico. It's, it's not super common, especially if Six Nod is from New York, his father could very well be a white Puerto Rican. We don't know this. I haven't seen no images of his father or his mother. I don't really know the background on their ancestry. All we know is uh, their nationality. His mom's from Mexico. We don't know if she's Afro-Mexican. When it comes to mixed people, triracial people, colonized people in Latin America, and I say Latin because we're not really Latin, we're indigenous people. When it comes to Latin America, we are very mixed people. It can be very hard to tell what exactly somebody is. You know, there's a lot of white passing black people. There's a lot of people I know that look straight up white and they got a whole ass black dad. That's dark skin, wide nose, 4C hair, you know, everything. So when we're trying to figure out if somebody's black just by their looks, even that can be very limiting. You ask me, he looks indigenous as fuck. Um, black, I don't know, kinda. I've seen black people that do look like Takashi 6 9 but I don't know. What's the most important thing is identity. Now, there's a word called transracial. A lot of y'all know this word because of racial dolezal. Transracial is an actual thing, but transracial does not apply to people like racial dolezal. You can't be white and claim that you're black. You can't be black and claim that you're white. Um, transracialness um, applies to people that are usually racially ambiguous. Let's take me for example. I self-identify as black. I am Afro-Indigenous. I am from the Taino peoples. I am from West Africa. That's where my ancestry is from. However, I am considered black here in New York City, but if I went to Kenya, I would be considered a point, five point. I wouldn't be considered fully black. If I went to Dominican Republic, I would just be seen as another Dominican person. I wouldn't be seen as un negro. If I went to South Africa, I'd be considered colored. I wouldn't be considered black because the class structures racially are different around the world. Racially ambiguous people, they're fluid. They're racially fluid. So when we talk about people that are somewhat racially ambiguous, like Takashi 6 9 people that look mixed, it's all about how they identify. There's people that identify with their blackness and there's people that identify as black. There's a very distinct difference. For example, a lot of people in Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, they are in touch with their African roots. They claim, I got black in me, you know, but they don't identify as black. They identify with their nation. Say, I'm Dominican. And the fact that I'm black, white, and indigenous makes up who I am entirely to be this Dominican person. They don't identify as just black. They identify with all three races that make up um, their lineage. Whereas me, I identify as black. I'm not half black and half Taino. I am fully Taino, fully black. I live both of those experiences entirely. Both of them coexist at the same time. Takashi 6 9 does not identify as black. And in the Breakfast Club interview, you can see that he does not refer to himself as black. He ref refers to black people as they and he as himself. He says that it's just a part of his vocabulary. People seem to have a problem with you saying nigga. Who gonna stop me? Who? It's the way I grew up. My culture is, I grew up in Bushwick, Brooklyn. I, I, it's not like I'm saying, that's a dirty nigga over there. It's my vocabulary is the way I talk. I'm all from New York. You probably went to school around. How many Spanish kids walk around like, hey, my nigga's popping? Like, Do not make it a me thing. I'm not Post Malone. I'm saying nigga. I can say nigga. Now, he clearly d d does not really go into depth on the political nuance of what he means by it's just my vocabulary. He's not the first person that does this. I think everybody should say nigga. I've been using the fucking M word for 30 years, man. What do you want me to tell? Like, even if I want to stop saying it, I really can't stop saying it. Like, I I'm, I'm sorry. It seems like it's something that is so normal, which is bad, but like it is what it is. You have a lot of people that are racially ambiguous in hip hop that don't have the political knowledge to really explain what they mean by, it's just a part of my vocabulary. Oh, that, that's just how I grew up. Where them Latina people came from? 
they mix people, you know, we mix with with um African, European, uh what is it? Uh mulatic and everything. And I'll say it again. Me personally, I don't think you should be saying it if you're not black. However, if a white person said nigga in front of me, I would react very differently than a non-black person of color. Example, Arab, Mexican, Chinese. Now, first of all, it's very easy to explain to you why it's okay for black people to say this word and not white people. White people created this word as a use of oppression. It was strictly made by them to enslave the minds of African people. So over time, these slaves they would call themselves niggas. And that's African-American vernacular because their accent, most slaves couldn't read or, or wouldn't really speak very well. They'd speak in jives. That's what developed into African-American vernacular. We turned English into a whole new language type shit. You know, just like how I just said type shit. You know, type shit isn't grammatically correct, but it's still grammatically correct when it comes to African-American vernacular. So slaves will go around calling each other this until it became a term of endearment. They have reclaimed it for themselves. Oh, nigga this, you my nigga. Oh, yeah, that's my nigga. Oh, I fuck with you, my nigga. That's what we say nowadays, you feel me? That is a reclamation of a slur in the same way that gay people often refer to each other as the F word. In the same light that, you know, a lot of men complain like, oh, well, why can't I call women bitches? They call each other bitches all the time. But that's because bitch is literally a word that is used to oppress women. They call themselves, oh, you my hoe. Oh, my hoe over there, my bitch this. Oh, yeah, that's my bitch. That's my best bitch. That is a reclamation. It is a term of endearment. The context is entirely different because that was a word that was used to oppress a specific type of people. And those people have now taken it and flipped the tables and said, no, you can't have this. We've taken this word. The word that you use to enslave us, we're using it to empower us. That's why it's different for white people to say nigga. If you don't get it, then you just don't want to get it at that point. A lot of people would like to say, oh, well, maybe no one should say it if it's such a bad word. To be honest with you, as a hood nigga myself, sometimes I'll be thinking that to myself. I'm like, should we really be saying this word? But no, we gonna have this word. We gonna keep this shit to ourselves, and y'all gonna keep being mad at the fact that y'all can't say it without no social repercussions. Cause like I said, you can say the word, but should you say it? If you're really trying to keep the peace, you shouldn't say it. Freedom of speech does not equal freedom of consequences. You're not gonna go to jail for saying nigga. You might lose your job. You might lose your friends. People gonna look at you funny. Why are you trying to risk that just to prove a point? Knowing the history of your people, and I'm speaking to white people right now, knowing the history of your people and what your ancestors did. If you was really for black liberation and you was really for the progression of black people, if you consider yourself an ally, then you would let us have that. You feel me? You would let us have that word. You would let us go through our process. Because eventually, we might just stop saying nigga. Who knows? If you really truly believe that we shouldn't say nigga, and that we just saying that out of spite? Fuck it, let's double down on that. Maybe y'all saying it out of spite. But a word, us saying nigga, is not gonna hurt you as much as the, the, the financial sabotage that we're dealing with right now. Due to what your father and your father's father did and the benefits that you receive based off of the slave labor and based off of the laws that were put into place to benefit you that didn't benefit us. So that's the white people shit. That's something that's hard to grasp even for a lot of people still. So it's gonna be even hard for people to grasp this about people of color. We got the white shit out the way, right? Boom. So maybe we all on the same page. White people don't say nigga, right? At this point of the video, maybe we all on the same page. Maybe you're like, I bet white people can't say nigga or they shouldn't say nigga, I should say. So why shouldn't non-black people say it? I'm not Post Malone, I'm saying nigga. Anti-blackness is global. Everybody praises Gandhi for being this revolutionary, for being somebody that was about peace. He didn't give a shit about black people. If you do your further research, you'll see that he actually thought that Africans were not equal to Indians. And he just wanted Indians to be at the same level of treatment as whites. And this is seen in a lot of non-black ethnic groups, even native indigenous people to America did own slaves and, and did believe that Africans were subhuman. Anti-blackness is global. Chinese people, listen, any black person watching this knows what it is to have a Chinese friend, any East Asian friend, and how weird it is to go to their house. If you were an East Asian child, you know, China, Korea, Japan, hell, even Vietnam or, or, you know, Southeast Asia, even the mixed Indians in Trinidad will know that your family might be okay with you communicating and having acquaintances that are black, 
but they don't want you to marry a black person. Even mixed Dominicans, I'm talking to my people right now, know how anti-blackness is global because of how your mom and dad reacted when you brought home your black friend or how, or how they, for some reason, are so trusting of all your other friends, but when you bring black people, they automatically act like they gonna steal some shit. This, in Dominican Republic, there's a whole term called mejorando la raza, which is you wanna get with somebody that's actually lighter than you to purify your bloodline, to, to make your kids have fairer skin. Anti-blackness is global, right? So nigga is to be reclaimed by black people that went through this struggle ancestrally. Black people reclaim this word. You feel me? Chinese people can't reclaim this word because Chinese people were never called niggas. I get it, you know, a lot of Koreans love hip hop or are into black culture. I fuck with it. I fuck with, if you've seen my documentary, you, you, you know that I love the intermingling of Asian and African culture. But if you can't even bring your black boyfriend home, why are you even saying nigga? Come on now. What would your Asian parents even think of you even saying nigga? <laughs> like, like, that's what I'll be thinking in my head. You know, it, it's, there's a cultural nuance that it depends in Harlem where I grew up, Mexicans and Boricuas that don't consider themselves black, still intermingled a lot with African-Americans. You know, like nigga was a term of endearment. So yes, while I believe that non-black Mexicans shouldn't be saying nigga, I really personally don't get really that offended if I hear them say it. You know why? Because they grew up in the hood hearing black people tell them, you my nigga, you my nigga, you my nigga. So now it's just, that's ingrained in them. That's a reflex. That's like saying bro to them, you feel me? So yes, why they shouldn't say it, you gotta have patience because somebody like 6 9 that grew up in the hood, I'm not talking about like Mexicans that grew up like in Cali and Mexican neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying, where they didn't grow up around black people. I'm talking about people that are, look at Takashi 6 9s videos. He's surrounded by predominantly black gang. At a certain point, this is like a, a, a microcosm of cultural assimilation because he grew up in this shit. It's not like he's Jake Paul trying to do hip hop to appeal. This is a kid that grew up specifically in the hood, you know, saying this. People was not correcting him on this, probably. Most likely they wasn't because they saw him as a nigga, you feel me? It's kind of a unwritten thing that Spanish and Puerto Ricans and niggas and we're all kind of in the same family and all my Spanish niggas I know say nigga. I did not know that Mexicans and uh, Puerto Ricans saying the n-word was a thing. I didn't know that y'all didn't like that. I didn't think, I didn't think nothing of it when he, when he was using the word. To be honest with you, I didn't even, I, I didn't hear it. All I'm saying is Fat Joe, Cardi B, and all our E, all our people, mm -hmm. they use the word. I ain't never heard y'all send yeah. me any tweets That's true. talking about why y'all letting them say the N-word. But this morning, Takaji69 on here, who's a Mexican and a Puerto Rican, he using the N-word. And y'all, y'all, oh, I can't believe y'all letting him use the N-word. I'm like, come on, man, y'all gotta keep the same energy at all times, man. Be consistent with your shit. Should he reconsider saying it if he doesn't consider himself black? To be honest, he should. But at the end of the day, we can't expect him to just not say it. When you grow up in the hood, and I grew up this way for a long time. You, it's very hard to, to think outside the block. You know how this think outside the box? It's hard to think outside the block. Everything is the block. Everything that she was taught, you know, the, the social norms, the customs, everything is the block because the hood and the ghetto and like, especially like living in the projects, like it's just, everything is very claustrophobic. Like niggas in the hood don't be traveling Niggas in the hood, like, they don't really be going nowhere. You feel me? Especially if you gang affiliated, like, you dead not going nowhere. So you're not open to, to, to hearing the perspective of a lot of people. You grew up in a place where nigga was normal. Saying nigga was normal for anybody that grew up in the hood. That was just a word of, of general struggle. It didn't even have a tie to blackness. And then all of a sudden, you're famous and you making headlines with people saying, Oh, Takashi 69 is racist. Takashi 69 is anti-black. Why does he say nigga? Oh, Takashi 69 thinks he's entitled to use the word nigga. I Settle. think they were upset because they don't see her as a uh, 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 Jenny from the block, Jenny from the Bronx. They see her as this global icon. And That's where the confusion comes from. That say like, well, I don't get it. What's the big deal? Like I grew up in the hood. People call me their nigga. I called him my nigga back. It was a term of endearment. We grew up. And now all of a sudden, because I'm famous, I can't say it? Kinda. Because once you get famous, now it's different rules. Rappers usually have a hard time adjusting to this. We have these rappers that come from poverty, they come from the hood, they 
have this mindset. They may not have had the luxury of the time to study a lot of these things, even though we're in the age of the internet and accessibility to knowledge is higher than ever. But when you're worried about everyday survival, when you have influences around you that are not super productive, that are not politically educating you, then that's how you have a lot of rappers and hip hop that aren't entirely educated on things like homophobia or misogyny or anti-blackness. So when they become famous, you can't just automatically expect them to be woke as hell, especially when they, they didn't ask to be this political figurehead or to be as clean or pro progressive as possible. And they, they just there to make music, you feel me? But of course we demand accountability when they do things that hurt an oppressed group of people because we are the people that are empowering these people. Collectively, we've decided that they're gonna be famous, that they're gonna be the ones to be wealthy and they're the new it boy or the new it girl. So we demand this accountability from them. We have empowered them, so we want them to make us feel empowered and not make us feel bad. Is it really a lot to ask an artist to not be problematic though? You're famous now, you're rich now, you don't have an excuse anymore. You shouldn't be out here calling women bitches and oh well I could say nigga, I could say whatever I want. That's the time for you to educate yourself. When I say that a lot of these artists come from the hood, it's not an excuse, it's an explanation. They still have to do better because plenty of people gave the same excuse for Cardi B when she's said transphobic things. Yo, if a nigga cheat on me, I'm be like, guy. I'm gonna take him out, we're gonna get drunk, I'm gonna get him all perked up and everything, we're gonna have a good time. Get him super twisted, then bring a bitch around. We're gonna have a threesome. And when he wake up, he's gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah, because the bitch was a tranny. I'm gonna be like, yup, yup, we had a threesome with a tranny. Yup, yup, a tranny suck your dick. You don't gotta fuck another nigga to get even, bitch. There's other ways to get even, you know? People say, oh, well, she's from the hood, so she's not super woke, all right? But now she's not there no more. She made it out already. So there comes a time where they have to take accountability. They have all this power, they got this money. So now they're under the spotlight. They're gonna be under all of these different criticisms and they can either be super defensive and say, oh, well, I do what I want. Or they can say, you know what? I'm in a better position in my life now. This is the best time to grow mentally for me. So maybe some of these criticisms from my fans are things that are valid because you don't get criticism from just haters. You know, there's this whole idea, oh, well, you criticize me, so you just a hater. People always gonna have something to say. Yeah, people always gonna have something to say, but some of those things can be helpful to sit there and analyze it and to let yourself be educated by the people that are empowering you, the people that are buying your music, the people that are making you famous. Just because someone gets famous, it doesn't mean that they're gonna be the next spokesperson of progressiveness, but at the same time, they gotta be held accountable. When you in the hood, I'm not saying that just because you hood that you have to be uneducated. You feel me? I'm from the hood. I think I'm pretty educated. You know, I, I think I've done the work. But, but the thing is, I'm also privileged to have a mother and a father that was very involved in my life that was able to influence me to not, you know, be a part of gang culture and, and, and not, you know, to avoid a lot of certain things. And so I, my brain focused on things that were a little more productive, you know, than, than gang banging shit. And so when you're growing up around a lot of ignorance and when people are enabling a certain type of ignorance, even like other black people around you saying like, oh yeah, you my nigga, you could say nigga. It's, it's just different from hood to hood. I don't even use the word nigga around old black people. Older black people have a different perspective because they're, they're, they're more tied to the negative connotation of the word. Older black people that grew up in an era that was before civil rights, they was hearing like the hard N word, you feel me? So. That word is a trigger for them to hear any variation, nigga, nigga, you know, and it don't matter how you say it. <laughs> like, it, they're gonna be like, nah, you, you just shouldn't be saying that word, period. And you gotta respect it because it's not even about if I can or can't say the word nigga. Even though I'm black, I won't say the word nigga in front of older people just out of respect. It's a respect thing, it's, it's, a, it's a courtesy thing, it's whether or not I should say it, depending on the context of it. You know, me and my niggas, these is me and my niggas. I'm not about to go to some old head and be like, yo, what's good, my nigga? You feel me? Because it's disrespectful. That's a word even of camaraderie. I wouldn't call some random stranger my bro. So why would I call him my nigga, you know? A lot of Southern black people don't even use the word nigga as much as New York niggas do. I know a black kid that grew up in Japan and he said he didn't really grow up with the word nigga, so he just doesn't use it. 
even though he's black, he can say it, but he's, he says he doesn't feel like that word is a part of his culture, that that was not a part of his struggle. He didn't grow up around that. And I've noticed this a lot of uh, black people that were either hood adjacent or they just didn't really grow up in the hood and they were like middle class and they didn't even really use the word nigga that much up until like their later teens uh, uh, and when they were older and then they have the nerve to go on Twitter and be like very black and white about the issue. Like if you're not black, you can't say nigga. And they want to like basically go around saying who's who can and can't say nigga. If you mixed, you can't say nigga. If you this, you can't say nigga. They don't have the experience of growing up where that shit was literally just like a passing term that no one even really like racialized that heavy. And I know a lot of people that used to say nigga and they'd be like, yeah, like I used to say nigga because I, I didn't think it was a bad thing, but you know, times is changing. And, and you know, now that I'm a little more educated, I, I don't think I should be saying it, but the, you have to be able to educate some of those people on, on that. And you can't just be like, nah, just don't say it. Nah, if you're not black, just don't say it. And that's why I wanted to create this video to try to create a, a, a conversation around this word. Like y'all could comment down below. Is nigga just based on the context? Anybody could say it as long as they're not being offensive? Or is nigga something that just black people should say? Should nobody say it? Why? Creating the conversation is very important because at the end of the day, it's not just a word. It's a heavy, even if it's just a word, let's double down on that. It's just a word. But everything is just a word. The Holocaust is just a word. Kike is just a word. Spick is, is just a word. But when I said that, it felt weird, right? It felt weird because the context is that different. We don't use that word on a day-to-day -day basis. Words have meaning. Like words are one of the most impactful things of life. It's communication. Communication is everything. You can't sit here and tell me like, oh, it's just a word, so it doesn't matter. That shit means a hell of a lot if it's a word that's been used to enslave people and it worked. So that shit was powerful. Okay, what, what if? Somebody says nigga, that's not supposed to say nigga. I don't think white people should say nigga, but what am I supposed to do when I do hear a white person say nigga? What's next? You feel me? Like, what if you hear some, some white Puerto Rican dude say nigga? What, what's next? What are the repercussions? What are the social repercussions? Like, where do we go from there? Something that's, that shouldn't be complicated, that is very complicated, because I feel like a lot of people be too lazy to even talk about it all sides. Whether it's the people saying, oh, well, I can't say whatever I want. And you got the people like, well, you're not black, so don't say that shit. And nobody really wants to get into depth as to why and what, what the shit means. Because everyone wants to chalk it up to, oh, it's just a word. One side is saying it's just a word, so, so why can't I say it? And then the other side is saying, well, if it's really just a word, then why can't you stop saying it? If it really is just something so small, then why do you feel the need? Like, why, why is it so important to your vocabulary that you can't remove it? Words are impactful, my people. That shit's impactful. <laughs> so comment down below, you already know. So I'm Monte here. If you would like more hip hop commentary from a sociopolitical angle, satirical comedy, and video essays, consider making a small dollar donation to my Patreon, which allows me to continue doing this full time. A special thank you to my $5 patrons who will be receiving a monthly live stream and questions prioritized for the topic of a Q&A video or even a video essay. Eastside Harlem Rapids